Going to around the northwest now, I see that Ireland's first ever thatching school is going to be built in the southwest of the county because the county council has granted planning permission to uh, Nyarn, Port New, and Ross Bay Community Co op for the facility. It'll be at the, the Dolman Centre and the first of its kind in the country where uh, people can learn to thatch properties properly. And the largest concentration of thatched cottages in Ireland is reputed to be here in Donegal. And within Donegal, Inishon has the highest number. Uh, there's uh, actually a new book out called Irish Thatched Cottages, A Living Tradition. And it looks at that thatched cottages, not just here in Donegal, but around the country. And uh, it reveals the, the art and craft of thatch and uh, the history and the stories behind uh, many of the thatched homes. Uh, and I'm delighted that uh, the author, Emma Byrne, now joins us and uh, joins us streaming as well on Facebook. Emma, good afternoon to you. Good afternoon, John. How are you? Good, good. You're, you're jo are you joining us from a thatched cottage from your home? Well, uh, strictly speaking, it's not true because I'm in my little shed, my very posh office out at oh. the back. Oh. Uh, but yes, it's on the property of my attached home down here at the other end of the country in County Wexford. All right. So, so just talk us through the experience of living in a thatch. I actually grew up in a thatch cottage. And uh, not that it was uh, very romantic, mind you, we put, uh, it used to be rushes on the roof back then. And uh, the anymore it, it, it tends to be a, a bit more sophisticated than that so what what sort of a thatch roof do you have so the thatch roof that i have it's a little different to what you're used to there in donegal um in that the well the material could be similar so it's a wheaten thatch roof so it's long wheaten straw and um in donegal there uh, more often than not the thatch is made from flax or from rye and I suppose another difference with the roof here is that the pitch of the roof is very high. So it's much more of a strong apex triangular uh, shaped roof. Whereas in uh, North, in Donegal, the Northwest, in particular, in particular coastal regions, it tended to be rounded and uh, more of an A-frame and it was tied on with ropes uh, onto bacons, which were stones that came out of the the yeah. top of the wall and it's really to do with weather and the environment in each of the places um you know th there are lots of different styles throughout the country and in Donegal where you've got huge huge Atlantic winds blowing off your wild coast um it wouldn't it made more sense that you had the roof had a lower pitch and was rounded whereas here it suits the weather conditions to have a higher pitch and that affects roofs in different ways, I suppose. But there was even different styles of thatching within the one county, like within Donegal. In 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 some parts of the the county, say in the east of the county, the the thatching style would have been different to along the the west coast. And that was that was down to um, the weather, and especially you know, yes, uh, coastal weather. Absolutely. Um, that that's as you as you move. Further east into Donegal, that you have a higher pitch and different materials. And it, when you think about it, it's common sense. Um, the weather really influences, you know, the materials and and how people built these houses. I mean, all of these houses, they're from they're from the vernacular tradition where pe local people used whatever materials they had locally, and they use them to work with the weather conditions that were available to them. And it's why it's very exciting to read about that piece in um, the Donegal Daily about the thatching school. And you would hope that it does reflect that, no, I mean, not only in Donegal, you have, a, you have a certain type of thatching, but throughout the country, there are lots of different traditions. And most of the thatchers here that you speak to, uh, including the, the thatcher that worked in my own house here, he is British and he learned his craft in Britain and he he has uh, four apprentices now that are working on their own uh, who would have learned from him. Um, and uh, so that's that's a certain sort of style. And I a, a Thatcher that works in Donegal a lot, Ivor Kilpatrick, he will have his own sort of style, which is based on the environment of Donegal. 
So there's lots of different styles and traditions, and it's great to see them, um, you know, a thatching school dedicated to that. Absolutely. And all the different styles are evident in your book and uh, some some just holding up to the camera there and some some brilliant pictures as well. And it's not just we're not just chatting about the thatch cottages here because there's, you know, pubs and uh, restaurants and uh, museums and all sorts of buildings. Absolutely. I mean, that was one of the things when I went around taking photographs of all these different uh, buildings, you, there's a huge amount uh, of, I mean, the Thatch Cottage for so long was this romantic image of Ireland that was exported um, th throughout the world as part of our Irishness. And if there is an old or vernacular building uh, in a community, you, 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 it's wonderful to see the community look after that. Um, in, in, if it's in private hands, it can be a public house or it can be a museum. Um, but I, I always remember up around Loch Ney, there was a fisherman's cottage that still had it, its thatched roof and be, was a community center. So people in the community helped to look after that. So this old building that might've been disused or fallen down as so many of thatched buildings are because they're difficult to maintain, was cared for by the community. And there is a map in the book of all the places that you can go and see that still have thatched roofs that are open to the public. So whether it's the Heritage Park in Wexford or up in Glen Column Kill up there near yourselves, um, you have the Father Dyer Park, which is a fantastic facility. And it, you, you don't just see, as you say, the thatched roofs, you see how people lived lives in these buildings, how they were constructed from local materials. And I suppose the lessons that we can learn from, from that uh, in contemporary times where we're looking to locally source uh, buildings, uh, materials, etc. Um, it's a huge part of our heritage. And uh, we do have this romantic notion about uh, Irish thatch cottages and I can tell you there was nothing too romantic about the one that uh, we lived under because when it got wet it was, uh, it was uh, basins and buckets to the rescue. But uh, you know things, things have moved on now and obviously um, a, a most buildings or cottages would have a you know a very uh, not only a secure but a, a um a, you know a, a waterproof a waterproof uh, thatched roof and uh, uh, as i mentioned your book great examples of different styles and different sizes of buildings but it is we have this iconic image it's of mm. the, the thatch cottage in ireland with the thatch roof we do i mean it's it's there throughout our history. It's exported, uh, I mean, in particular to America, I suppose, and to tourism. Um, and, you know, the, the golden roof with the little painted windows and the little painted door. Um, uh, but there, I suppose what I wanted to look at in my book was, uh, as you said, if you grew up in one, I'm living in one. So you have you have the reality where you're, you're dealing with, um, you know, rodents, or birds. I currently have uh, two far, uh, families of starlings living over the front door. And so there's interesting battles there uh, of a morning. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, and the costs of insurance. There's only one insurer at the moment um, that, that, that deals with that. And the maintenance costs. Every year you have to put copper sulfate, which is a preservative, onto the, uh, the, the roof to maintain it. Um, so you know, it's it's part of it's not, it's not easy. It's part of what you you buy into, but then you're aware of that when you go into it. That you know, you're it, it's not just a twee symbol that you're trying to keep alive for the sake of it. Um, it, it these it's an important historical place, and you know, from it, the stories that go with it, you know, they're usually old buildings. Like my house that I live in was traditionally a great card house. So all the people in the community used to come and play cards in the winter nights and you would f find things like the ver their old layers of thatch as 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 you you know as it's come to being retached over the years and um the thatcher would find something from the last time it's been thatched like a piece of newspaper from a certain date and there have been stories of uh wheat that goes back 300 years you know where, where they they've um taken 
a sample of it and um, they've discovered, you know, what sort of um, plants were, were uh, around at the time, what kind of pollen was produced by the bees. And you're, you're, it's a living organic thing, I suppose, that you're, you're, you're living with. So that's a bit removed from this little twee image, you know, uh, you're battling with it the whole time. And are they are they in decline or has, has the situation now stabilized? It um, they uh, a mix of both, I would say. They're they are in in decline. I one of the things I read when I was researching the book, it was a publication by the Department of Housing from the seventies, and it, the first line of it was, "Thatch cottages are doomed. They're doomed, but they're still here. There's about fifteen hundred on the island, and." Uh, but they are they are still disappearing. I think there's only twenty roped cottages left in Donegal, um, and you know, despite but there's new initiatives all the time. The you know the department recently have uh, released funds uh, targeting the help to help uh, vernacular building, and the, so it's constantly being talked about. People are constantly trying to do stuff. Um, so far they're surviving and you know it's but but it's down to private ownership and it's down to people um having enough energy and strength to keep them going i think well just chatting to you uh, emma and and uh, looking at the pictures in the book is bringing back a lot of memories and even there you mentioned birds and and how you yes. you've uh, you've a nest and we used to have nests as well and given that the roof was so low that the building was so low it was great as, as kids, you'd be able to go up and sort of try to peep into the nest. I know we, we didn't realize back then we weren't supposed to disturb the nest, but uh, <laughs> anyway, one of them one of them things going up. The book is called Irish Thatch Cottages, A Living Tradition. Emma Borden, thanks so much for chatting with us. Thanks very much, John. All the best. Thank you. The tidiness, one bedroom at a time. Sheila, housekeeper. I think